Okay, so now that you have a basic idea of how the problems work, I kind of want to take a step back and make sure you're good at the basic skill practice. So if you're ever asked to differentiate 3x squared with respect to x, it's pretty easy. It just becomes 6x, like you always have. You don't have to worry about putting dx over dx or any penalty. Now if you go to do this one, it's the same deal. It's, uh, it's still 6y, but you also have this penalty, since it doesn't match in letter, to attach, kind of like the ninja rule, the derivative of a y with respect to x, dy dx. Um, or, alternatively, if you want to write that as y prime, that's fine too. So both those ways are okay. But I wanted to show you, they are pretty much exactly the same. So moving on to more, what if you had the derivative of 4y cubed? Right? 4y cubed would be 12y squared and a penalty. I'm going to do the y prime one because it's quicker to write. Um, here's a question, and this is getting into what, where the chain rule even came from. What if I told you, right? What if I told you that y equaled x squared plus 2x? Mm -hmm. What if y equaled x squared plus 2x? And I wrote the original problem with this thing in instead of y. Because we oftentimes know what y equals, right? So if I rewrote that problem as 4 times x squared plus 2x, and then I asked you to take the derivative of it, right? I'm going to take the derivative of this thing. Oh, wait, there's a cube there I missed. Cubed, right? So instead of 4y cubed, it's 4 times this thing cubed. Well, if you took the derivative of this, you'd do ninja rule, right? 3 times 4 is 12, right? And then I write this thing squared. And then I do the derivative of the inside, right? So it's a... Uh, 2x plus 2. Um, that is the same as the other answer. This is 12, right? This is y squared. And, because that's y, right? Y is this. And then this is y prime. So the ninja rule we've been doing recently is the same thing as this implicit differentiation, except you don't even have to know what your function inside is. So if you see a y there, just pretend it's a function you don't know, and you're doing the ninja rule every time. That's a great reminder to attach this penalty, right? You want to think of it as a penalty? I want to think of it more of a blessing, right? Okay, that's enough of that. All right, so another example would be try to take the derivative with respect to x of this monstrosity. 3y to the 5th plus 7x to the 4th minus 2y squared plus 14x plus 4y minus x plus 2. I want to see if you can do that. Go ahead and pause it and try it out. See if you got it right. I'm going to do each one. I'm going to let you pause now. All right, now that you're back after doing the problem, you wouldn't have just like let it keep playing now. Um, I'm going to start doing this. So I got 15y to the fourth. Ninja rule, y prime plus 28x to the third, uh, don't need anything because it's an x and it matches, minus 4y, ninja rule, y prime. Uh, 14 is the derivative of x, 14x. Uh, the derivative of 4y is 4, but you have a penalty because you took the derivative of y with respect to x, and minus 1, and then I still have plus 0. That's the derivative. Um, crazy, right? We're not like solving for y prime. That's not really the derivative. That's just um, differentiating with respect to x. All right, so why don't you write down, here's our general steps for implicit differentiation. And then we'll do a couple. Here's our steps. One, differentiate both sides of an equation. with respect to x. Um, and then two is collect 
all the dy dx's or y primes if you like doing it the shorter way to one side of the equation three after you collected them factor out the dy dx's using gcf's Remember, you can do y primes too. Sometimes you don't need to do that. Sometimes you do. And last is divide to isolate dy dx. Because that's when you know you're done. You know you're done when you get it by itself. Because that's what all our other answers were. We just didn't have to work so hard. So let's try. That was our example one. Let's try example two. Okay. So this is find y prime, okay, that's your directions, and here's your equation. 3y squared plus 6x squared minus 5y equals 2x minus 6. Looks like a monster of a problem, right? Not anymore, not now that you know implicit differentiation. I'm going to differentiate with respect to x. So I'll have 6y, and i got to pay the penalty, because it could be a function in there. Um, and then this one's going to be 12x, right? Then you go minus 5, except, wait a second, that's 5y, so I have to pay the penalty, right? Derivative of this is 2, derivative of that's nothing, right? So I did every piece, don't forget the other side too, I did every piece with respect to y. Now my next step was collect all the y primes to one side. So I got a y prime there, I got a y prime there. Basically, i got to get this 12x out of there. Okay, so I have 6y, y prime, minus 5y prime, equals 2 minus 12x. You can also write negative 12x plus 2, that's fine. So I've done step 2. Step 3 is, if you notice there's more than one, factor it out using GCF, which is really not hard, and then divide by whatever monstrosity is here. Sometimes it's really ugly. But whatever you do to the one side, you do the other. And you'll have y prime equals 2 minus 12x over 6y minus 5. Ta-da! That's the answer. Not bad, right? Um, yeah. And then, you know, you could do all sorts of problems like that. Those are the, the general steps. And if I had a point to plug in, like let's say the point 1, 5 was... Um, was on this line. I don't. I just made it up, so it's probably not. You would put a one in for the x and a five in for the y, and you would get the slope of the line at that point, which is crazy because these are like weird shapes. These are like ovals and and uh, circles and hyperbolas and all sorts of crazy stuff. Anyway, that was another couple examples. Hopefully, you're pretty good at these. Um, yeah, good times. Talk to you later.